This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. And here we're going doing a little bit of review on what happened with the Rumble and Owen Hart throwing out his then tag team championship partner, Davey Boy. Let's hear him. I did it at the Royal Rumble. It's every man for himself. I accidentally eliminated him. Oh. I was trying to put out Stone Cold and Bulldog fell out. So let's drop that issue. All right. Well, notwithstanding that, and then Bulldog, when you were outside, this is the way you responded to your brother-in-law, Owen. Oh, thank you, man. That's yeah. right, you called him an idiot. That's right, I saved Owen from Stone Cold putting him aside, and he put me over to the no, top rule. I told you it was an accident. I don't need you calling me an idiot. I'm I don't need you. I'll be I don't need you putting me outside the you ring. Your cards right. <laughs> and I can take you right to the top like I've done before. But yeah. don't be calling me no idiot. I'm no scripts, no writers on this one. You put me over the top rope on purpose. You think these guys can remember no, their lines? No Are you shitting me? I think uh, they did a pretty good job. Oh, you're great. But they just were natural. They were just talking. And Owen was leading the charge. Much underrated uh, promo guy. Very much underrated. We're uh, we're going to transition here, JR, into a tag team match with Owen and Davey Boy. But I wanted to put a bow on Sid with him. And I have to ask, was anyone ever considered in terms of a mouthpiece or managerial type for Sid during this run of his career? Of, of course. And uh, it was discussed thoroughly. I think if I remember correctly, and this is a stretch perhaps, it was uh, uh, Sid's idea to talk on his own. Okay. Because it's, he's a smarter businessman than he looks. No, no disrespect to Sid. I don't even come up here from Tennessee and kicking my ass. But uh, bottom bottom line is he wanted he wanted to be the total package. He wanted to be the guy. I'm not talking about being Lex Luger. He wanted to have everything he needed, all the tools in his box to get him to the top where he could stay there. And one of those things was how effective the promos would be. He thought he could do the promos effective enough and let it rock and roll. I brought in uh, LaFon and Furnace. I was really high on them. I was hoping you would talk a little bit about them. I know they were in Smoky Mountain. Jim Cornette was a fan of them. Talk yeah. about talk about a little bit why you uh, were, were just big fans of their work. Did you? Well, they're you know? just cohesive. They had had so many uh, outings. You know, they have been regular tag team partners for a long, long time. So they were seamless in, in their execution. You know, of course, uh, Doug Furness, the late Doug Furness, one of the strongest men in the world, uh, was from my home state of Oklahoma. As a matter of fact, he's from Commerce, Oklahoma which is, uh, there was another famous athlete from there named Mickey Mantle. So he's a uh, Oki. And Phil, of course, was a uh, French Canadian, I believe. In, they, were in very, your... they were very good. And they had the trust of Owen and, and Davey. Owen and Davey knew how good their opponents were this night. Did LaFon and Furnace JR really have a chance to get over in the WWF? as you think about them as a, as a team? Well, I think they could get over meaning to, to WrestleMania main event level or to tag team level. champions for, you know, always being the title chase title hunt or carrying yeah, the belt. I think so. I don't know why not. Neither yeah. The, one, uh, neither one were great talkers and that held them back a little bit, but they're damn sure good guys, hardworking dudes. We, uh, you, you saw the controversy, you heard the, uh, you know, what was going on as far as the rumble and we're building to a Owen and Davey for the European title. But at this point, do you know the heart foundation deal is going to be happening or is the plan to just split these two as of now? I don't remember, uh, what the, I think at some point it was all about getting everybody back together with Brett. Okay. That made the most sense. That's what I would have, that's how I would have booked it. And it doesn't mean it's right. It just mean I liked it. And the thing about it is that, Davey and Owen could use the, the rub and, and get a little shine. The tag team division was not red hot. And then putting Pillman eventually in that group and Anvil, uh, that helps them too. And they had, they had abilities that were under, under utilized short arm scissors. You don't, you don't see that very often. Hey folks, it's time to take your podcast game to the next level. And you certainly want to get your almighty push. My God, we have to have a push, right? Well, get that over at adfreeshows.com. 
Now, I'm telling you, if you're a fan of Grilling JR, AdFreeShow.com has the entire episode library, and it's got no ads, zero ads, zilch, none. Ad free and on video starting at just nine bucks. Did you hear what I, what I said? Nine dollars. You spend more than that at Starbucks, for God's sakes. Two mornings. But that's not all, folks. We've got tons of bonus content, including my after hours roundtable, where drinking was involved with Eric and Tony. You simply will not find a better value in all of wrestling. Hey, look, don't make me go red ass, because by God, you know I will. Hurry over to adfreeshows.com right now and sign up. And I thank you. Jim, this match is actually one of the longer matches on the card. It's going to go about 14 or 15 minutes. And uh, as we watch the match take place here, I'll ask you a few more questions that came in from some of our members uh, Chris Mason says, Jim, how exciting was it to take the weekly television to such a huge venue? Well, it was exhilarating. Yeah, it was exhilarating. The, your environment uh, has uh, pretty much everything to do with the, the, the overall presentation of the show. You know, the announcers are feeding off that natural ambience and, and uh, the crowd reactions and, and things like this where the guys – or uh, look at look at the furnace has got so much explosion. Mm. Owen takes his licks and gets the hell out of there. Mark of a great heel. But this is a good. I I, I love this pairing. I thought, you know, Doug's just was just an amazing athlete. It's not just strength. He played football at Tennessee. He competitive uh, power lifter. Lived there. In, I think he lived in San Diego. But it was nice to have him around. You know, we could talk about Oklahoma and cornbread and kendo beans and things like that. that Bar- barbecue. A little barbecue talk. It's nice. Part of, our, it's part of our heritage. There you go. Nice uh, headlock into the head scissors. Robert Palmer, no, not the one that's addicted to love, but a uh, member of AFS, says, we know that JR is a huge OU fan. Is he that guy with a high voice that does those commercials about the refinancing? I don't believe it's the same yeah, one. Eyebrows, eyebrows are all waxed up and <laughs> slick. I, don't, I guess not. It's, it's not him. Robert, but, okay, what does Robert Palmer want? Robert Palmer, he said, I know you're a huge OU fan, JR. Which pro teams and all sports does he follow and which wrestlers are diehard fans of teams? Does JR have any good stories of watching games with the boys? So this is more of a general question as we watch this tag team affair. It's but actually, he wants to know. Yeah. It's actually three questions. It is. He he went he went off My the rails. NFL, but... NFL team are the ones that have the Sooners on it. So, for example, Joe Mixon, ah. uh, Cincinnati is a Sooner. So I'll, I'll I won't be rooting against Cincinnati. And Los Angeles has got a couple of Sooners. So what I've tried to do over the years, you know, I follow the Jacks as I live here, and I get get great seats at the right price for the games. <laughs> Thanks to Tony Khan, who's taken good care of me the last almost three years now. Uh, so, but the, the OU guys influenced a lot of my passion. Um, the, the football is a popular thing with a lot of guys uh, in our roster. AEW, they were very prominent in, in WWE because I hired a bunch of guys that had football backgrounds. I, I always thought that worked. So I don't know what the other part of the question was. That's so w- before I get to that, so Jr., you're trying to tell me you weren't enjoying when uh, when Britt Baker was taking all those shots at Baker Mayfield the other night on Dynamite. I'm the Baker that wins. I I thought it was uh, entertaining for what she her role and yes. what she was and all those things. Uh, but yeah, it was it was good stuff. I mean, yeah, that was good. She doesn't mind getting heat. I know, and I think that's uh, admirable for her. She's just. Britt Baker's the baddest bitch on the block. She's a big, big asset to AEW. There's no doubt about that. He, uh, he wants, uh, he, Rich Robert Palmer, uh, he wants to know what, which wrestlers are diehard fans of teams. Anybody stand out in your mind? Well, you know, uh, the, the guys that had home bases in Atlanta were Falcon fans. 
there were guys like Mark Henry, for example, was a Cowboys fan. A lot of it depended on where you grew up. And a lot of these guys were fans of their favorite pro team before they got into wrestling. So it was a mixture, to be honest with you. Most of the guys were uneducated at football, just like the teams that were winning. Gotcha. They're just uh, whoever's winning right now. Pa- Patrick Mahomes, well, he's not winning right now. They didn't win yesterday. Went. Well, does yeah. JR have any good stories of watching games with the boys? Do you remember? Well, I'm sure you've watched a lot of, like you said, Jaguar games with some with some people lately. Well, I watched I, I, I watched Jaguar games with uh, Chris Jericho, and I've watched them with uh, Adam Cole and Britt Baker. Bay Bay. Uh, yeah. So those guys, since I moved to, to uh, here on the beach, there's an inside cradle. Inside cradle, home. yeah. That's a good hole. People look at it as lazy. It's not lazy. It's good wrestling. So furnace is selling well, but I, uh, back in the mid South days, man, there was no, we didn't get time off to do shit. So have you ever been to a super bowl JR? Yes, I have. I've been several of them. I went, I went to the one, the famous game where the Falcons had a 28 to three lead. I think it was. <sighs> oh no. And, uh, and Brady, who my wife detested, my late wife hated Tom Brady because she's a Steelers fan. There you go. And, and she saw too many. I like this called psychology. Look, roll up. That's right. And there it is. The bump, the Davy boy knocks him out. He's going to be pissed. He probably thinks Owen did it. Yep. Continues that story. And there he goes, Owen yelling at him. What are you doing? Let's, let's see if we can unmute some of this here. Oh, wait a minute. We'll be right back. Stay with us. We'll get this under control. Playing after the break. Royal Rumble Raw. We are emanating from the Sky Dome in Toronto, Canada. Some 25,000 plus fans on end when we left you. Owen Hart and the British Bulldog having their differences as they certainly have had in the past recently. But a bow! Apparently now getting it back together. And uh, Doug Furness. They continue to yell at each other. Well, uh oh. Here's the cover and a count in. But it added a good wrinkle and an interesting element to the storytelling. And without overdoing it, it was clear, as we're both saying, there's a trouble in paradise here with uh, Davey and Owen. Boy, that's the that's strength right there. A belly to belly overhead suplex. Now, I'm sure it's got a different name today. It's either got a Hispanic <laughs> name or a Japanese name, but I look at it as a belly to belly overhead suplex, and it worked out really well. But it takes a lot of strength. And uh, Furnace popped his hips, which is what you have to do. And it worked out really well. We get the hot tag on both ends, and here comes LaFon. Got them both in the ring. Double noggin knocker. Phil LaFont was a lot like Vader in the much as that his body was starting to break down. He, he got hurt here. Working for us. Nice roll through. Earl Hebner, your referee. Oh, nice snap suplex. Hebner again with a two. But, man, you're right. Technically, these guys were sound, and this is a good wrestling match between these these four gentlemen. Oh, roll over into the DDT. As Vince would say, what a maneuver. Foot on the rope. Nice heel move by Owen to put his foot on the bottom rope. LaFon and Furnace think they won. They didn't. As referees pantomining. There's an inside cradle, and here comes Davey. Davey laying in the lumber with the big kicks into the arm bar. I'll read the review here as, oh, nice Savat kick. Sweet Stan Lane-esque, but to the face. And Davey Boy breaks up the pin. Uh, Meltzer would say, Phil LaFon and Doug Furness beat Owen Hart and Davey Boy Smith. I know I'm spoiling it. Listen, this happened 25 years ago via count out. So we're going to see a count out here in this match. It does go 14 minutes, 30 seconds. But here's what I wanted to share, Jr. Furnace was suffering from the flu, so he's sick. We talked about Vader with pneumonia. Furnace now has the flu. Match wasn't what you'd expect from the four, but it was still decent. I think this is a good match. Much of it was teasing the eventful Hart uh, Hart and Smith breakup. Finish was a bad one on a night filled with bad ones. 
Smith accidentally backdrop Owen, which we just saw, over the top rope, and he was counted out on the floor so the titles didn't change hands. We're watching it now. Hebner's counted. He's rung the bell. This match is over. They did an angle where Owen was faking his knee injury in front of Smith but dancing behind his back, giving the impression he took the count out to keep the title on purpose. Two and a quarter stars. Let's listen in as they go to the end of this match in the replay. Finner submission. Take a look at this, JR. Well, the Bulldog had his eyes off of the action. He took for granted it was going to be LaFon going over the top, and it was Owen Hart who apparently has twisted his knee. Yes, and wait, wait a minute. There's he's running. It's his knees all right now. Well, now it, is it all right? I, I think we've just been I duped. Well, flared back up on it. I'm not so sure about that. Oh, and here comes the Bulldog to have a conversation with Owen Hart. Do you think Owen Hart was intentionally counted out? Saving the title? I think Owen's trying to sell us a bill of goods. And I'm not too sure the Bulldog's fine. <laughs> or Owen's going to ask him for a timeout for 10 minutes. A timeout when the match is over. Oh, please, give me a break. Standing by right now, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.